Hello, hello, everyone. Um, I am Stefan. Uh, it's a pleasure to be joining you remotely. Unfortunately, couldn't make it out to New York this time around, but I hope the conference is going well. Um, I am one of the co-founders over at Flashbots, also um, architect of the Mev Boost uh, system. Um, and today I'll be talking with you all about MEV beyond uh, the merge. Um, so maybe I can just start with a quick introduction of you know, what Flashbots is, what MEV is, why is it that I was invited here today to uh, speak with you all. Um, so Flashbots is a, a research and development organization that's been formed exclusively to look at MEV. Um, MEV really two years ago when we started this organization was a very niche um, a niche, niche industry where only maybe a handful of people, five to 10 people, I'd say, um, in the world were sort of participating in it. Um, and, uh, and today it's sort of converged into something, being something that's uh, uh, very highly specialized already, uh, a multi-billion dollar industry with a number of large, uh, large firm participating in it. Um, and, uh, and it's been quite, uh, quite the journey. So I want to take uh, you know, you all with me uh, as we sort of explore very briefly um, how MEV has emerged um, and in particular how um, MEV has changed just in the last week um, on uh, on Ethereum uh, with, uh, with the advent of the merge. Without fur further ado, um, Let's uh, let's look at a framework that uh, that I've been using quite a bit to describe the the MEV industry, which is the the MEV supply chain. Um, so if we um, if we look here uh, at the way that you know we've traditionally thought about uh, interacting uh, with blockchains, um, what what we've seen is really users that interact with the wallet uh, to create some transactions. Um, and then those transactions get sent to an Ethereum node or a Bitcoin node and, and, and propagated to the network over peer-to-peer. -peer. Um, and historically, those have gone directly over to you know, a miner on the other side. The miner aggregates those transactions uh, and puts them into a block and includes them on chain. Um, what we ended up seeing uh, around uh, 2020 with DeFi Summer um, and, and even previously to that with some of the early um, projects doing uh, on-chain decentralized exchanges is the advent of a new role um, that that we like to call a searcher. Um, and so a searcher, what they've been doing is they monitor the transaction pool, they monitor the chain, and they uh, they identify opportunities that are created by, uh, by user transactions. Um, so opportunities to do arbitrage, to do liquidations, rebalance pools between uh, between two different uh, decentralized exchange or perhaps a decentralized exchange and a centralized exchange. Um, you know, other types of opportunities that these searchers have identified um, have been things like uh, uh, token listing snipings or liquidity pool listing snipings, et cetera. Um, so, you know, all of this type of economic activity we like to describe as as MEV uh, because it's, it's value that ultimately the miners are the best position to um, to accumulate, um, but they're not necessarily specialized enough to be able to capture that value. Um, and so there's this new role of searchers that sort of emerge over the course of the last two years um, that um, that uh, that could capture those those opportunities. What Flashbots did is it created sort of a, an efficient system uh, for these searchers to be able to express their preferences. And we introduced this concept of a, of a transaction bundle, so an array of transactions um, that, um, that allow for expressing some more uh, um, granular intents on how these uh, these transactions are to be included on chain. Um, and for you know the better part of the last two years, um, these bundles were communicated to miners and included on chain. Now the big change with the merge is the introduction of yet another role in the supply chain, which is the role of the block builder. Um, so this really is the separation of, of a role that the miners have had uh, put together in the past. On Ethereum, builders and validators uh, uh, together uh, were sort of playing the role of the miner, of aggregating the transactions, aggregating the bundles, producing a block, and then proposing it to the network. Now with, uh, with proof of stake, what we have is a new system called proposer builder separation. Um, so again, validator being the proposer, builder being the builder, 
the builder is a specialized entity that's taking these transactions, taking these bundles, producing a block, and then is able to propose these blocks to the wide range of validators that, that are in the network. Um, the reason why this is important is to be able to maintain validator decentralization. Um, so as, as we know, Ethereum has 430,000 uh, individual validators. You know, some of these are, are large node operators, some of these are, are, are solo stakers at home. Uh, but regardless, um, you know, not all of them have the infrastructure, uh, the capabilities, uh, uh, the, the machines to be able to do you know, the high level of, of specialized work that's required to, to construct a block. Um, and so to avoid an advantage to those who do, what we sort of have done is insert this, um, this separation between the two. Uh, that, that allows for uh, for any validator to connect to uh, to even the best uh, block builders. Um, so so the system here that we've introduced is something that's called uh, that's called Mevboost. You know something that we've been working on for the better better part of the last year um, as an organization, and we're super excited to to finally um, uh, see uh, live on on Ethereum proof of stake. Um, I have here some uh, some initial metrics that we can look at. I apologize, it's it's a bit small, um, but you know one of the nice things about MevBoost is that it provides a new um, um, a new view into the value uh, of of MEV. Um, historically, it's been sort of difficult to be able to identify exactly how much is a block worth, uh, but with MevBoost, all of a sudden it becomes completely transparent how much a block is worth uh, because the builders are bidding on a full block basis for inclusion. The outcome is that we can build some beautiful graphs like this. Um, so this is a, a community member who's who's um, who's deployed this um, this uh, this table at mevboost.org that tracks the the net percentage of the network that's actively using mevboost uh, for producing blocks, um, and then keeps track of various different relays and block builders and and their performance. Um, so yeah, what we've seen is that in less than a week, uh, now over uh, uh, twenty. Uh, Twenty percent of the network is is connected and, and producing blocks uh, using MevBoost, and uh, and they've already accrued uh, over a thousand ETH in um, in value. Um, here's another interesting graphic. I think this one is is um, is produced by by this team called Rated Network, um, and the most interesting part I think is uh, looking at um, the average total rewards uh, per block. Um, and this is where we really see the benefit that a system like MevBoost is able to bring to stakers, um, because on average, um, right now, validators on Ethereum who, who are not connecting to MevBoost, um, when they propose a block, they, uh, they receive um, uh, 0.06 of execution uh, rewards. This is 0.06 ETH. Um, or, or here's the, the, the number, including the consensus rewards. Um, and those who connect to um, to Mev Boost uh, get a, a, a quite a significant uh, boost in their rewards, right? Hence, hence the name. Um, they they receive up to 2.3 times um, as much uh, uh, reward or, or yield on on the stake that they uh, that they have. Um, so you know. 2.5 times, uh, 2.3 times, 2.5 times the, the reward is is not an insignificant number. Um, and this is empirical data, right? Like this is what we've seen over the course of of, uh, of last week. Um, you know, one question that I've been receiving uh, lately is, well, you know, there's only 20 or so percent of the network that's connected to this. How is this number going to change over time as the percentage of the network using MevBoost increases? Um, my answer is I think it'll be pretty stable, if not increase. Here's the reason why. So um, the alternative to using MevBoost for, um, for these searchers is to send transactions through the, the transaction pool. Um, and that's an incredibly inefficient way to do price discovery on the value of an opportunity. Um, one of the big, uh, the big goals that Flashbots has is to provide sort of open access, low barriers to entry competition for uh, for these MEV opportunities. And the outcome of that is uh, more efficient price discovery. Uh, so um, what, what I would suspect to happen is as a percentage of the network that uses this open, transparent, low barriers to entry system for MEV, then we'll see more efficient price discovery more value that goes towards um, towards the 
uh, the validator is relative to the value that's kept by searchers or builders. Um, so yeah, in summary, probably these these numbers will continue to go up. Obviously, there's uh, you know there's uh, there's volatility in mind, and and there's been more volatility around the merge. So it's uh, it's it's tied to to some other outside factors that are, that are not just um, you know the percentage adoption. Um, here's uh, here's another uh, dashboard by uh, by Chainsight Analytics. Um, just tracking the number of blocks and the rewards over time. Uh, another great way to to visualize this, you know, over less than a week, two two million dollars in uh, in MEV has been distributed to uh, to to stakers, um, and so it's it's a system that's already uh, producing uh, quite significant returns here. Okay, I want to touch on a few uh, myths. I think that. Um, that have been percolating through through the community. I think it's particularly interesting to talk about. Um, I've talked sort of at length about MEV in a variety of, of different podcasts over the last month. Uh, and so I would encourage you to, um, to go uh, listen to those if you wanna deep, uh, dive deeper into these topics. Um, but the, the, the first myth I wanna sort of discuss briefly is that MEV is bad. Um, I think a lot of um, the initial reflections that people have when they they hear about MEV is, oh, this is value that's being extracted away from uh, from users, right? This is like bad activity. Um, this is uh, predatory in some way, extractive in some way. Um, and I don't think it's particularly useful to to think of it this way. Um, MEV is in many ways what makes blockchains work. Um, so transaction fees that are paid by by users for consuming block space is equivalent uh, to MEV. Um, it's value that they are giving to the validators uh, for, uh, for inclusion. Um, MEV is also um, uh, what allows for a lot of, uh, of DeFi protocols to work, right? Um, uh, decentralized exchanges in particular. Um, if MEV was not there, there wouldn't be an incentive for bot operators to arbitrage the prices of um, of of uh, AMMs with those of off-chain uh, order books, um, and so it's a tool. And it is is very much so a tool, and it's a cost. It's a payment mechanism um, that can be used to incentivize certain types of behavior uh, on the network, um, and so that can be used in a, in a way that's value additive or value subtractive to, to the overall system. MEV can be eliminated. Um, I think this is a lot another big misconception, right? People believe that if we only design blockchains that were MEV proof, uh, we would be able to get rid of this uh, this issue completely. Um, and really, what what we've discovered and 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 the research that we've done is that we can move MEV around, right? We can create new systems that take MEV from one place and put it somewhere else. Um, but there's this sort of concept and, and rule of thumb that we call the, the law of conservation of MEV, which is when you squash MEV some one place, you know, as long as there's an economic opportunity, it will arise somewhere else and, and, uh, and specialized actors will adapt to be able to, uh, to capture that, uh, that opportunity. Um, so we don't think that MEV can be eliminated, uh, but it can be minimized. Um, you can de uh, design applications, design um, uh, tools, that allow for uh, creating protocols that expose less MEV, um, uh, but not, not, not necessarily eliminate it completely. Um, myth number three, uh, MEV only exists in blockchains. Um, this is something that uh, we've, uh, uh, we, we've sort of seen these narratives emerge of, oh, like here's another reason you know, why blockchains are a scam. Um, there's this thing called MEV and it's like bad for users. The reality is that um, MEV exists in traditional finance as well, right? Um, you know, our company is called all Flashbots, and it's it's based on 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 the term Flash Boys and 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 the work that um, that's been done to sort of understand how um, how this behavior uh, of finding opportunities, um, uh, uh, capturing those those opportunities through deep understanding of of, of market microstructures. Um, exists in traditional finance. Um, we see the exact sort of dynamics in, in decentralized finance. Um, and so it's it's something that exists across all financial systems. I think the main difference with blockchains is that the stack itself is decentralized. Um, and so the solutions 
to to deal with with uh, with that value to deal with that MEV um, end up looking completely different um, than those that uh, that exist in, in traditional finance. Yet the 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 economic activity itself it ends up looking very similar. Uh, myth number four: MEV is a solved problem. Um, so there's another question that I end up receiving. Okay, great. MEV boost exists now, and you know, does this mean that MEV is solved? Uh, and the answer again is no. Um, so MEV boost is very specific in what it intends to achieve, which is to maintain validator decentralization, allow uh, even solo stakers to participate in capturing the best blocks. Um, but there are other uh, very difficult problems that emerge with MEV, including um, the potential of, of centralization due to to order flow, uh, as well as centralization due to uh, cross-domain execution. Um, and so there's still a, a wide range of, of research topics and products to be uh, to be developed uh, to help deal with, uh, with MEV and help um, blockchains uh, remain healthier. Okay, um, I'll just repeat briefly the, the Flashbots mission, right? And, and perhaps give some context in how we think about these, uh, these problems. Um, we, we, we really aim to illuminate, um, democratize, uh, and distribute. So illuminate the markets, bring uh, some transparency, price transparency, uh, transparency to the type of activity that the, the various actors uh, perform. Um, democratize really means um, minimizing uh, barriers to entry, uh, keeping these markets uh, competitive um, and, uh, and fair to participate um, such that there is no, um, uh, no sort of entrenchment that, that becomes destabilizing for the market. Um, and then distribute um, is really about uh, returning the majority of the value uh, to the key stakeholders, which is the users, the validators, right? Uh, the retail operators who are interacting these, with these markets and ultimately the, 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 um, the entities for which uh, these markets are, are created rather than these like highly specialized actors who, um, who should really be there to, to facilitate the, the, um, the healthy market. Um, so what, what does, um, what does a, a, an optimistic future of MEV look like, right? What does the actual solution uh, for MEV look like? Um, and the way that we think about it is, is decentralized block building. So an ecosystem uh, in the supply chain where all of the steps in this market are open and, and transparent, um, there's value flowing uh, uh, across the supply chain uh, to the edges, right, where, where the users are. Um, and, uh, and there's open competition in each of these specialized verticals. Um, so I'll, I'll leave you all with this uh, as something to think about. Um, and uh, yeah, please reach out to us uh, over at, uh, at flashbots.net or directly to me on Twitter at, uh, at the ghost app. Um, and uh, thank you so much for having me.